film of modifications I made to my Squire Bullet Mustang with dual humbuckers in imperial blue. Specifically, how to split the coils of two wire humbuckers that come stock on the guitar with a push pull pot, and how to add a kill switch, which can give a tremolo ish type sound that the bridge provided cannot provide. However, the vintage Squire Mustang does have a tremolo, tremolo arm. Mechanically, I shielded the body with copper tape, drilled a hole in the pick guard for the kill switch, changed out the capacitor midway between humbucker and single coil. I selected 0.33 UF. Then I changed the gauge of the strings to 10. I polished and filed the frets. Aesthetically, I think I made a mistake in the selection of color. I like the black much more now. To make the imperial blue work, however, I felt the guitar needed to move from a kind of grungy look to a more classy chromed out look. I replaced the drab white pick guard with a vintage cream perloid pick guard, installed chrome, installed chrome, a chrome's kill switch covers, installed locking strap locks that were also chromed, installed chrome gnarled knobs not pictured here, chrome roller string trees, and stained the headstock, just the front and the sides, a medium oak. All told, the cost was for mods was about 53 quid, on top of the 112 I paid for the guitar new. The tools you'll need are provided here. I would add to this list patience. I had never done anything like this before. I had never even used a soldering iron. I recommend watching some YouTube videos on soldering to get it right. It can be tricky at times. All told, it took about five hours to do everything listed. One of the first things you need to do when removing the, the humbucker is to identify the polarity of the humbuckers. You don't need to do it now because I've already done it for you. It's set up in Damasio polarity, that is, the norths face each other, uh, in order to retain some humbucking capabilities. When the coils are split in tandem, one needs to be north and one needs to be south. Note here the ohms readings of the pickups. On the whole, the humbuckers are pretty hot for ceramic pickups, as I understand. 9.74 for the bridge and 9.11 for the neck. Split, they're on the weak side, but very usable, and I still get a clean and kind of twangy sound out of the bridge. The readings, you can see them here. The neck totaled 9.11. The neck north was 4.73. And the neck south was 4.44. Back to the diagram, I chose the north bridge and south neck to make the single coils. While you would think I would want the strongest pickups here, the closest to the bridge is the, you get less string vibration and less output, therefore. I really wanted the bridge pickup split for a more Telecaster type sound, so in the end, I chose the two weakest. Of course, the neck pickup should be weaker than the weaker than the bridge vibration that you get closer to the neck. Now to convert the two wire to the four wire, the humbuckers on this guitar of course are two wires, not four, usually required to split a humbucker. Although many humbuckers can't be done, it can, I did, and it works great. You'll need to unwrap the single wrap of electrical tape from the humbucker to reveal the wires. Be careful not to pull anything out here. This is pull slowly. When there, you'll notice it was a four-wire humbucker. They simply soldered the ground wire of the south coil with the hot wire of the north coil in the neck, and vice versa for the bridge. You can see that. Let's actually just tie them together here. These are the two black wires coming out of the humbucker. Because these need to be braided together anyway for the coil split, attach the soldered black wires to the black and white of the USB cable. To follow the Damasio wiring, attach the red wire of the USB cable to the south white wire closest to the neck and the green wire to the north pole white wire closest to the bridge. This is true for both pickups. Use the brazed shielding cable as the ground for the base of the humbucker uh, or another wire as I did. It doesn't really matter. Indeed, 
in the end, I removed most of the shielding because the hot um, uh, black wire, or in this case, red wire for the Damasio wiring needs to be nearly a foot from the direction of the other wires at the three-way switch. So it makes sense to unsheath the wires almost totally and work with them separately. Here's the diagram for the coil split. I got this from Breja Toneworks, um, which their video is much more informative than mine for the specifics of how to wire it anyway. Uh, the YouTube video below um, will help you. There's the uh, URL. Um, not this diagram. It follows, don't use this diagram specifically for the color coding. It uses Seymour Duncan wiring. So green and ground are still soldered to the ground of the volume pot, but red, not black, is your hot wire that goes to the three-way switch. Black is braided and soldered to the middle pin of the push-pull pot. Essentially what happens here is you ground out one of the coils when you pull up on the push-pull pot, leaving just one coil. The top two pins, the pins closest to the push-pull pot, get grounded out, and one of the middle pins is soldered to the black and white wires of one humbucker, and the other middle pin is soldered to the other black and white of the other humbucker. No wires are attached to the bottom pins of the push-pull pot. The push-pull pot the push-pull pot you want to buy should be about 15 millimeters. If you can get smaller, that would be even better. Um, even that is too long, so if you can find shorter, do it. I had to break off the ground pin on mine uh, so it would fit under the, 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 the chromed piece and not fit the bottom of the guitar. I also had to remove the spacers of the volume pot to make the knob uniformly long. They do stick out a little bit more, and hence I've decided to switch out the black volume and tone pots for a chromed, gnarled ones, which are longer and fit closer to the, um, the chrome base plate. It does fit, but it means the ground pool for solder needs to be on the side of the push-pull pot, not on the bottom, as described in the Breja Tone Works video. While you're here, you may as well change out the capacitor. The capacitor provided is fine, but they're quite cheap, just two quid on Amazon. Uh, pointed out with a 0.33 orange drop. It's a happy medium between single coil and humbucker. Note that the top pin to your left, that white wire that I'm soldering on, is attached to the top left pin of the volume pot. And the ground also, under the green sheath, is grounded to the side of the push-pull pot that ground is also going to the volume. So here's the finished product of the middle wires not being soldered yet. The middle top pin is the capacitor. Now the kill switch. Here's the kill switch diagram. Again, the specifics of which I will direct, direct you to the Breja Tone Works video. They do an excellent job on both the kill switch and the split humbucker wiring. Here's the chrome kill switch I Nice, easy push action uh, for a fast kind of tremolo type effect. And here's the final wiring waiting for the two plates to be screwed back on. You can see the copper tape shielding work I did as well, but you can watch part six of Guitar Geek's video on how he shielded the Squire Bullet Mustang. And here's the final product.
Thanks for listening. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Uh, thanks for listening, and uh, have fun.